So it turns out this way of creating objects using functions is fairly common in JavaScript. So the language provides a shortcut to let you write functions that create objects. This is a feature in JavaScript. These functions are called constructor functions. You might be familiar with the concept of constructors in other programming languages. Constructors are basically functions which let you populate the object that you need to create. Every time you need to create a new object, you use some kind of a new keyword and call a function, and that function prepares the object, gets everything ready, and then returns the prepared object to you. Right? JavaScript has a similar concept, but it's it has its own nuances. So let's cover that. So think of a function like this, which creates an object. Right? You've written this function to initialize an empty object, and then populate everything you need to populate on that object and then you return the object that you initialized over here. So if I were to tell you that there are like a hundred different functions like this in your code, right? So there is one create employee object, one create department object, create accounts object. There's so many objects that you could create. And let's say you're using this format, this kind of a function to create those objects. If I were to ask you, what is the common thing in all these different functions? What would you say it is? What are the common lines of code that you can be sure exist in all those different functions that create objects? But if you think about it, you'll see that the first line and the last line are more or less common. When you're creating an object, when you're writing a function that creates an object, the first line would be creating an empty object, and the last line would be returning that object that you create. So between these two lines, there is a bunch of lines that you would have to write to populate that object according to what you're trying to do. In this case, it's an employee object, so you're populating the employee details. If you're creating a function, uh, you know, if you're creating a department object, then this would be the department details, right? So you would have to populate the object that you create over here. But essentially, the first line, which initializes an empty object, and the last line, which returns that object after all the population has been done. So these two lines are more or less common across all functions that serve the purpose of creating objects. Right? So JavaScript has created a shortcut which lets you not have to write these lines when you're creating functions that create objects. All right, So these two lines can easily be skipped. It's basically JavaScript saying, hey, when you're writing a function that needs to create objects, these two lines are mandatory. You have to write them. So I might as well give you a feature which skips those lines and, hey, you developer, if you want, you can use it. Right, So there is a way you can skip those two lines. So the way to do this is by calling this function in a constructor mode, okay? You need to basically tell JavaScript, hey, this is not an ordinary function. This is a function that I'm using to create objects, okay? So I need to say, hey, this is a constructor function. The way to tell JavaScript that the function that you're calling is a constructor function is by adding a new keyword in front of it. Okay, so when you say new space and then do a function call, you're basically saying, hey, JavaScript, I am making this function call because I want it to behave like a constructor. I'm using it to create an object. Okay, so this new keyword gives an indication to JavaScript that this function actually results in a new object being created. All right, so once you do this, JavaScript is going to say, okay, I got it you are creating an object over here and I know that these two lines of code are mandatory. So I'm gonna take care of them. You don't worry about it. Don't write this line and don't write this line, right? Just populate the object. I'm gonna create that object in the beginning and I'm going to return that object for you after you're done, all right? So this is what JavaScript does. So you're basically, let me put this back for now, but basically that's what the new keyword says to JavaScript. You're saying, I wanna call this function as a constructor. Notice that this new is kind of different from the way you would traditionally think of the new keyword in languages like C++ and Java. When you say new something in some of those languages, the thing that follows the new keyword is actually the name of the class, all right? So when you say new employee in Java, you basically mean I want to create a new instance of a class called employee, right? The word that follows the new keyword has to be the name of a class but that's not true in the case of JavaScript because JavaScript does not have classes. What follows the new keyword is a function, plain and simple. That's all we have in JavaScript. The thing that the new keyword does is it basically switches it to a construction mode, and this enables JavaScript to uh, let you do a shortcut, right? It, it, it eliminates the first line and the last line, 
All right. So what JavaScript does is the interpreter does is it makes this new object that it created over here available to you using a variable, a keyword called this. Okay. So you don't access using new object because JavaScript doesn't know what new object is. It actually created this object using this. So it's equivalent to JavaScript adding this line of code at the very beginning. Okay. So and then at the end, it returns that this object. Okay. So this is basically the two lines of code that JavaScript is going to do for you before the function executes and after the function is done. All right. So this is what happens when you use the new keyword. Now, between these two lines is your chance to populate the object that's assigned to variable this. All you need to do is, rather than use the variable new object, which doesn't exist anymore, I'm just going to use the variable this, which is what JavaScript created. Now I'm going to add this to AFD assignment. All right. And now when JavaScript returns this, you basically have an object with all these things populated. All right. So this new keyword saved you two lines of code. Okay, this doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, I'll tell you how this is helpful later. The idea is JavaScript is taking care of these two lines, and it's also using a standard variable name called this in order to create that object and assign it so that you can access it in your code. Now, let me clear this out and reload and run. And now if I access EMP3, I'm still going to get back that object because it's exactly the same as what I did before, right? I used I use new object over here, and this wasn't commented out, obviously, and I was returning it myself. But now, since I'm using the new keyword, JavaScript is doing that for me, and it's using a standard variable so that I can write code using that variable. So hopefully the difference between these two approaches makes sense. Uh, the thing is, these two are very close with a minor difference. So if this is very confusing, don't worry too much about it. In the next video, I'm going to give an example of these two approaches and I'm going to contrast the two so you just cannot not get it. So see you in the next video.